Welcome to the Politecnico di Milano. In this short video, we will show how to install a system for the production of a disinfecting hand rub according to the directions of the World Health Organization. The system shown has been assembled at the Politecnico di Milano in the Department of Chemistry and Materials and Chemical Engineering to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Proper hand hygiene is without a doubt essential to prevent the transmission of pathogens such as viruses and bacteria. The WHO has published two different hand disinfectant formulas, both of which are listed in the attached document. The first formula contains the following. Ethanol at 96% volume per volume, hydrogen peroxide, glycerol, and purified water. On the other hand, the second formula substitutes ethanol at 99.8% volume per volume, isopropyl alcohol. The alcohols present in the solution act as antimicrobials, whose activity is greater if they are mixed with purified water at around 80%. Hydrogen peroxide is added to eliminate any bacterial spores remaining in the containers or in the instruments used during this process. Lastly, glycerin guarantees a humectant effect contributing to hand hydration. This short video will describe the procedure for creating a disinfecting solution using the first formula. Regarding the one based on isopropyl alcohol, please refer to the attached document. For example, here is a recipe formulated by the World Health Organization for 10 liters of product. 8,333 milliliters of ethanol, 417 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, 145 milliliters of glycerin, and 1,105 milliliters of distilled water. It should be noted that it is possible to prepare more or less than the 10 liters suggested. This can be done by proportionally adjusting the quantities of raw material as shown in the attached document. In addition, in the case that only reagents with different concentrations are available or if it is needed to measure the quantities of reagents by weight, you can refer to the attached document. This will allow you to produce exactly the same solution. A continuous process allows the reduction of the working volumes, providing a safer environment due to the lack of flammable and explosive vapors. Additionally, it ensures higher productivity and a more versatile packaging. This configuration requires two storage tanks two pumps, and a mixing tank with an exit for product recovery. To work safely, all the instruments described must be placed under a chemical fume hood or outdoors in a well-ventilated environment. Particular attention should be also paid to the explosiveness of alcohol vapors. For this reason, we recommend the use of peristaltic pumps in order to avoid direct contact of the alcohol vapors with electrical sources and moving mechanical parts. In order to transfer the formulation released by the World Health Organization to a continuous process, it is necessary to set the flow rates of the aqueous and alcoholic solutions. Depending on the available pumps, it is possible to produce different amounts per hour of disinfectant liquid as shown in the attached document. In this video, we show a plant with a production of 726 liters per hour of sanitizing liquid. This is possible having set the volumetric flow rate of the alcoholic solution at 10 liters per minute and the aqueous one at 2.1 liters per minute. To vary the final productivity, it is sufficient to modify the flows according to the formula shown in the attached document. Specifically in this case, the productivity is equal to 726 liters per hour. It is recommended to use a tank for the alcoholic solution of at least 100 liters, which has to be placed away from power sockets or sparks for the aqueous solution of at least 50 liters and a mixing tank of at least 30 liters. In particular, the tank for the alcohol solution must be filled with 96% volume per volume ethanol and placed under the hood. Regarding the aqueous solution, if a pump is available to pump the glycerol, the process can be carried out adding a specific pump for it. 
The flow rates and concentrations required in this new configuration can be found in the attached document. Due to the higher cost of pumps for viscous liquids, such as glycerol, we have only considered the use of two pumps. Specifically, it is recommended to prepare in advance the total volume required and then proceed with filling the tank with aqueous solution containing glycerol and hydrogen peroxide. Regarding the alcohol flow, it is necessary to position the tube inside the pump. Check that the flow direction is set correctly. Verify that the suction tube reaches the bottom of the alcoholic tank to avoid airflow. Insert a filter at the outlet of the tube to prevent the dragging parts of the tube that may have been damaged by the alcohol and control the correct flow rate of the pump. Regarding the aqueous solution flow, it is sufficient to follow the operations reported in the alcoholic solution case without the need to add a filter at the outlet of the tube. The calibration should be carried out to guarantee that the pump flow rate is correct. This can be done in mass or in volume. As an example, we report the procedure in volume. In any case, the densities and formulas shown in the attached document allow the same procedure to be carried out also in mass. To proceed, you must use two graduated cylinders of at least two liters and a chronometer. First, fill the tube completely with the chosen solution, eliminating the presence of air. At this point, proceed by measuring the volume you have in the cylinder during the time interval measured by the chronometer. Repeat this procedure at least three times by varying the nominal pump flows. Once the calibration has been completed, enter the measured values on a worksheet organized in a graph with the nominal value set on the pump in the x-axis and the volume actually quantified by the means of cylinder in the y-axis. Insert a linear correlation between the points and the origin and calculate the slope. Follow the mathematical steps shown in the overlay in order to obtain the correct pump setting and insert into the pumps. At this moment, having gathered the tubing that can sustain the desired flow rate, insert them into the holes on the top of the mixing tank. In case of overfilling of the central mixing tank, it is possible to increase the exit flow rate by adding a pump. The mixing tank should be equipped with an exit valve that allows the filling of several containers in discontinuous mode without stopping the system and without loss of the final solution. Now you can turn on the plant and obtain the disinfectant solution. Check if there are no leaks, monitor the levels of all tanks, filling and emptying as needed. Once the final containers are filled with disinfecting solution, it is necessary to carry out a quality control by evaluating its density. Specifically, to verify that the liquid produced contains a percentage of ethanol that maximizes the disinfectant capacity, a quality control test is carried out with an alcohol meter. The sanitizing liquid must have a density of 0.835 grams per milliliter with a maximum error of 5% and rest for a period of 72 hours before use. Once the desired production is finished, it is necessary to stop the plant by switching off the pumps at the same time and ensuring the cleanliness and maintenance of the system. 
with a particular focus on the state of wear of the tubes. In the event of a malfunction during the operation of the system, such as a sudden rupture of the tube or connection, it is suggested to stop the operation immediately, empty the liquid still present in the tubes, open the pump tube housing, and replace the tube as shown. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Further information on the system can be found on the website www.kenyotic.org. Any wire. other information, please visit our department website or send an email to polikina at polimit.it. Thank, Thank you. you.